Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we do a 20 foot by 4 foot concrete sidewalk. So this is a pretty simple DIY concrete sidewalk, in my opinion. So stay tuned for that. And I just want to say this video is being brought to you by the Concrete Underground. The Concrete Underground is my private training academy if you want more advanced learning for concrete techniques like we do. Stamping, slabs, uh, floors, repair, all that kinds of stuff is in the Concrete Underground. Also learning how to run a concrete business like I do. Check that link out in the description below. So what we're doing is we're getting the forms up and we were shown exactly where this needs to go by the homeowner. The homeowner is an engineer. He's doing a lot of this prep work himself. So he's the one that engineered the sidewalk and we're doing a bunch of little things like this on his property. So when you see us pouring uh, a little bit later in the video, we poured actually like four different things here on the same day. But right now, Darren and Luke are just getting the forms up. He wanted this sidewalk eight inches thick too. So he's an engineer and he decided on the thickness. So that's what we're giving him. So we're gonna get this boxed up. Again, it's four, <clears throat> four feet wide, 20 feet long. And this is just coming out the back door of his, his brand new garage he's building. We're going to give this a broom finish too, so I'm going to show you later in the video how we, how we do our broom finishes on concrete. But right now we just want to get the forms set in place, get them staked. We use those round metal pins. They got holes through them so we can screw right through them. Those pound into the gravel really, really good. You can see this guy's got about a foot of gravel under this. Three quarter inch crushed gravel. He's got it compacted really nice. So we're getting our grades set. We're sloping this away from the building about an inch. So about a quarter inch per foot on this one. Using, I like using my Topcon RLH5B laser. It's a self-leveling laser. I have a link for that down in the description too if you want to check that out but that's good for you know pouring things flat setting slopes whatever you need to do it'll do just about everything now the homeowner also wanted some expansion foam between the concrete foundation and the new sidewalk so we spray on a glue that's what Abby's doing it's a 3m type of glue we spray right on and then the expansion foam will stick right to that in really just a few seconds. And the expansion foam just allows the concrete to expand or contract, not stick to the foundation so it won't cause any damage if it wants to do that. Now he also wanted us to drill and pin every two feet into the foundation so the frost wouldn't lift this and damage his door. We live in the state of Maine, so we get freeze and thaw weather from November to April. So there's a potential here it could move. Um, it's probably not going to because of the gravel he's got under this and the drainage he's got. But we just want to ensure that this sidewalk doesn't lift at all and damage that door. You can see we're right up under the door. So we drill and pin in there with a half inch masonry bit and then we pound in some number four half inch rebar leave it sticking out about a foot and that'll keep the slab from ever lifting the Darren's thrown in some wire mesh for some added reinforcement we're, we're using a 4000 psi concrete too with fiber mesh in it and it's got air entrainment and the air entrainment just helps protect it during the freeze and thaw it allows water to get absorbed into the concrete and expand a little bit when it freezes. Those little tiny microscopic air bubbles in the concrete keep the surface from scaling and peeling and popping when the concrete does freeze. You see we're yanking up on the wire mesh as we go. We're pouring a pretty dry slump here today for us. We usually pour around a 6 but today's is around a 4. We just wanted to keep the concrete from sagging at all away from the building, so we, we kept the concrete a little drier slump than we normally pour.
what Tia's doing is she's using my DeWalt pencil vibrator and just vibrating the edges so when we strip the forms the concrete will be really smooth no air pockets no rock holes or anything it'll be nice and smooth when we strip those forms Abby's in the back there kind of mag floating the edges getting the edges nice and smooth while Darren's magging the edges to the top of that expansion foam up against the building and we'll use those mag edges to screed from here in a minute Like I said, there's there's five of us here today, but we poured a bunch of we poured four different things like this on this project all at the same time. So we just moved from one side of the building to the other, and we got everything poured we needed to today. Now I'm using about a five foot screed, and I'm screeding from the outside, and that's how I leveled off this sidewalk. Let me know down in the comments how many of you guys are thinking of doing your own concrete sidewalk or patio or pool deck if you are then like I said in the beginning of the video that concrete underground is going to teach you I have all the training videos in there that'll teach you how to do something like this so make sure you check that out it'll be well worth your time also if you're new to my channel I come out with a couple videos a week Mondays and Fridays about all kinds of different things we do with concrete so go ahead down there and hit subscribe now if you're not a subscriber yet and if you like these kinds of videos please hit that like button see how screeding off the top of your forms makes leveling the concrete really easy so whenever you set forms if there's a chance you can set them right to grade like we did that's going to be your easiest option for screeding Everybody's going to move out front to one of the other pads we're pouring and I'm going to get this bolt floated Get it smoothed out and we'll show you kind of how we finish this this project now I'm going to run the bolt float lengthwise from one end to the other because if I run it the short way towards the building and pull it back it's gonna make the concrete sag a little bit more than if I run it this way and I'm going nice and slow and I'm just gonna run it down and back once and then I'll mag float out anything I need to yeah. to smoothen it out even more we're using all Marshalltown tools the bull float the like come alongs that Luke has in his hand those concrete rakes are all Marshalltowns the mag floats we use are from Marshalltown. I have links for all those down in the description too, guys, if you want to check those out. So this is about an hour to an hour and a half later concrete set up enough so we're getting it now all mag floated out for the first time now it's not going to be quite ready yet to put a broom on for us it's just a little too wet but we're getting it magged out for the first time bringing up some of the cream some of the paste filling in any little imperfections that the bull float didn't get we also had to put a joint right there off the corner of that foundation just to make sure that 
if it was going to crack, if the slab sidewalk's going to crack, that it cracks right in that joint. And that's the only joint the homeowner wanted. He didn't want any other joints in this piece. So Darren and Luke, they'll get it all mag floated. They'll get the edges edged for the first time. And then they're going to let it sit for a little bit longer before they mag float it again and put the broom finish on it. So here it is about 30 minutes later. You can see just half of it's in the sun now, half of it's in the shade, so it's drying a little differently in those areas. But we're going to mag float this again now that the surface has dried up some more and it's getting a lot tighter. And that's going to allow for a nice, nice light broom finish on this. We don't want the broom finish to be too rough. It just, number one, it doesn't look good. It's hard to clean and it's not really necessary you just need a little bit of texture on something like this so it's not slippery we don't normally steel trowel exterior concrete here in Maine we'll mag float something twice that that's less likely to seal off the surface and trap in some of that air entrainment I was talking about earlier. If you do, if you do steel trowel it, even if you broom it after, you still, you still run the risk of trapping some air in there. And that, what that does is it, it causes like a blister or a bubble under the surface that you can't really see. And that ends up peeling and popping off later, later on down the road. So we'll mag float something twice before we'll put a steel trowel to it or a Fresno to it. We just don't normally do that here in Maine. That broom is, we get that from Marshalltown too. That's, I'll have a link for that down in the description. We like that nice little two foot broom for these smaller projects it leaves a really nice fine broom finish now when them guys get in the shade like that they'll just keep an eye on it and make sure that the texture looks the same as the texture in the sun because the sun part's going to dry a lot faster than that part in the shade and if it if it doesn't look the same then they'll wait a few minutes on the part in the shade and let it just dry up a little bit more. You can see how Darren cleans off the broom, gets some of the paste off the bristles so it's, it leaves a nice fine broom finish. Now Luke's going to put the finishing touches on that joint with uh, his hand groover. Darren's just touching up any little areas he couldn't get when the broom was on the handle under that door. That door overhangs a couple inches, so he was touching up under the door. Now he's going to finish it up with the with the edger there, just going around the edges and giving it like a picture frame look. But that's your basic DIY concrete sidewalk. Um, again, check the link out in the description for the Concrete Underground if you want more training on learning how to do something like this. Also, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video, guys.